This is pretty crazy, man. I'm not going to lie. And it's funny to see this play out in real time because I guess I've already had my like one podcast breakup sort of um I've had my little yeah, I've had my little thing with the Joe Budden thing, right? When Joe Budden's podcast was, was popping, I was a fan of it. And you end up going through that Passa Passa with Rory and Moore. You end up firing them. That was one of the kind of first times I was like, oh man, this is this hurts. This this kind of maybe feels like how, you know, some of you old guys must have felt when Opie and Anthony, you know, stopped being a show, when Howard Stern stopped being good. I can now understand why those guys would get emotional. Before I was like, oh, it's only, it's only a radio show. It's only a stream. It's only a podcast. Who really cares? But when you start getting attached to these guys and you start going to them for content and you start watching certain things you unfortunately i've done it myself you de you develop these weird parasocial relationships where you feel like you actually know these people because you spend hours and hours listening to them then when they break up and they stop being friends it legitimately feels like you've lost a friend it's flipping weird especially if they split you have to try and pick who you decide to go with and usually you end up picking neither for instance the joe Biden podcast um split Rory or Moore went off and did their own podcast called New Rory or Moore, and Joe Budden's got his same podcast with new guest. I don't really listen to either. You know, the breakup was that bad. Both podcasts I hear, I hear mostly New Rory or Moore. Joe Budden's hard to listen to because of his voice. Kind of reminds me of just how much of a dick he was to your friends. But it's hard to pick. It really does mess up, mess with your head. But it's really interesting to see no jumper fans having to live through this thing in real time. And I'm kind of seeing people on the Reddit kind of being upset. That everything's happened, you know, the breakup, essentially Adam 22 deciding he went to go in a different direction with no jumper. But in the process, he did it in the, he, he did the breakup in the worst possible way ever. And this person put a video together, which I jacked from the Reddit, which is a really good video that kind of, you know, makes me gives a roundup of how it started at no jumper and how now it's ended, unfortunately. So it's a quick roundup taken from a no jumper Reddit. Let's play. What if I told you not all Hollywood stories have Hollywood endings? <laughs> New life into the brand. Everybody's seen it. We all know. I don't even really like him. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, the man himself, do know. Their shoe game is looking pretty nice, my Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, Josh, yes, Josh, okay. He was happy. AD, AD, AD went. Get it out, you live, you bitch ass nigga. <laughs> Fuck your mama, nigga. <laughs> Fuck your bitch. Just know niggas got a little experimental at one point in life. Well, as soon as it happened, just because. Yeah! On the show. I've been next to you, you know, in life or death situations. Have I not? AD. I feel like we have different podcasting styles and I feel like we're not really like a great podcasting duo. We put in our uh, resignation papers today. And then I got because I gained weight too when I told the motherfuckers I ain't going to tell Of course, when it comes to No Jumper, for me, the sad thing about it personally is that I felt like this could have been avoided. This could have been avoided mostly because at the core of it, what Adam wanted for his network isn't too bad, right? He wanted to change. He wanted to take in a different direction. And if you're actually a fan of No Jumper and you listen to the shows, you could have seen that over the last few months, you know, the chemistry just wasn't there anymore. Maybe because partly because, you know, Adam basically let them do what they wanted in terms of off stream, in terms of, you know, No Jumper. They had their own streams that they were doing. Um, Fig Munity, Community, whatever it may be. Sorry, back on Fig Community that they were doing. Um, respectively with AD and T-Rail and that was obviously kind of becoming lucrative they were making money they're putting on live shows which they've sold out two days back to back they get a lot of viewers and whatnot it's picking up steam so you can understand Adam being a little bit annoyed and thinking hey you guys should be focusing here because this is your main breadwinner at the time it was but because you're streaming way more than you're working here by the time you do come to work on No Jumper, you're already tired, right? You're, you're, you've been out contented. You don't really have much more to give. And you're not really offering your best self on this platform. And he wants that. And then, of, of course, over time as well, you felt like they were just kind of turning up and cashing in checks. They weren't really trying too tough. For any other reason, we don't know what's going behind the scenes. But as an outsider, you could tell the magic wasn't there. They weren't trying as hard as they were before because they had their own thing going on naturally. And I felt like as well, Adam was like discovering that he wasn't really enjoying talking about hip-hop stuff anyway. He wanted to talk about other things. Like he, you know, I think he said it on, I think he's been on record to say that he actually enjoys recording 
the other podcast that he's got on his channel called Sledge Lords that he does with that guy Danny Mullen. And he actually legitimately likes that because that's like, you know, regular podcast chat and um, regular white man chat. It's not stuff concerning urban culture or hip hop and whatnot or Shade Borough or academics news. It's just general shit that he listens to on podcasts or maybe sees on Twitter, culture war nonsense that he went to get a take a part in. And obviously, you know, those guys, when it comes to at the end of the day, when it comes to no jumper show or whatnot, they're not exactly the ones that are plugged into all that sort of stuff. So those conversations he's trying to have on that show will fall a bit flat. And, you know, Adam kind of wants to be in control of anything, a bit of a narcissist, or that sort of malarkey, and it'd go kind of tits up fairly quickly. But I still think, even though he had every reason to change it, I still think, cons- you know, when you think about how close they all were, they were more than colleagues, let's be real. He did owe them, or he, they did deserve better, to be fair, in the breakup. Pulled them to one side, especially AD, because they were obviously closer, and they had a bit of more friction towards the end. Say, hey, I know you recognize things are going a bit weird with us. We're not the same way we were before. I want to let you know I've noticed it too. Um, the reason why is because I want this and I feel like you're here. I don't know, have like an actual honest adult conversation and kind of air it out. Why can't people do that? Why does it always have to end this weird way? It's so bizarre, especially when you consider the job is so easy. The job is easy. You get to you get to make flipping thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions from sitting in front of a camera and a crappy microphone and kind of spouting off you know, from your hip about topics that you don't really know much about. And the, the fans seem to love it. Cool. That's amazing. Then do right by your co-host, do right by the fans and try and break up somewhat cordially. It doesn't have to always end with fights and, you know, flipping beefs and shouting matches and this stuff and all that. It just feels a bit weird to me personally. And I feel like most of it comes from Adam. He's an uh, uh, inability to, you know, accept accountability and responsibility for the culture he created there. This idea of like content wins. All content is good content. Whether it's somebody getting beaten up on camera, whether it's people getting threatened, whether it's people, you know, having arguments, wanting to fight people, like all that stuff, he kind of encouraged it. Like it was basically like, you know, there was no deletion. There was no taking down of videos. All content stayed up. It doesn't matter how embarrassed it would make the host feel or how bad it would make other people see them in terms of how they look them as a media organization. It was all kind of the bottom line was, oh, let's get this content out there. And in the end, end up biting him in the ass because everybody then acquiesced and kind of followed his lead when it comes to how they appropriate or behaved at the show or at the network itself so i think he needed to take responsibility for that but he didn't and like i said before he just needed to pull them to the side that's the basic long and short of it he could have pulled every single one of them to one side he could have got all of them into one room and said hey I, as you can see i'm taking this to another direction you guys have obviously got your own thing going on we could either do, you can move it around, do this and this, or you could just go. And that would have been cool. But instead, it ended the way he ended. He did this whole big show and dance about firing Lush on stream just to kind of absorb himself of blame. He flipping tried to work, you know, T Rail and AD against each other, like trying to offer T Rail more money for this, the stuff with House One before. Just horrible, 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 horrible. So, you know, I'm a fan of Adam 22. I think what he's done with No Jumper is amazing. I think the early parts of No Jumper, when he was interviewing all those SoundCloud rappers, it was legitimately a really special time in culture and in music overall. But over time, I felt like he just got bored of doing that sort of stuff and wanted to move on, but just didn't know how. And then I guess in the process of hiring all these guys, he figured out his lane, but then he also wasn't man enough or didn't have the right amount of, or, or didn't really have, or didn't know how the right people skills to know how to manage the breakup. Maybe he's okay with bringing people on board, but being able to manage tension and regret and complaints and stuff and conflict resolution, he's just terrible at it. So definitely a visionary figure, I think, in terms of hip hop culture and media. But when it comes to being an actual boss, probably one of the worst of all time. He's probably up there with Joe Budden in terms of his inability to have any sort of people skills, his inability to read the room, to accept responsibility. Um, to see things through other people's eyes and just operate like an actual owner, right? Like an actual man. Like he just, you know, just just a bizarre human being. I'd legitimately hate to work for him. Like he sounds like an absolute nightmare. But I think in general, it worked out for the best. Adam will get back his network, get back his platform that he always wanted. He'll be able to do as many shows on culture war nonsense as he wants. And all the ever guys will be able to do their own streams and say and do what they want also. But it is quite a sad thing to see player in real time. And it's funny to see these fans of No Jumper who probably haven't gone through breakups when it comes to podcasts or content they listen to have to suffer in real time. Because a lot of these guys, 
enjoyed them as a crew because they were quite enjoyable to watch right like all their different backgrounds and different cultures and stuff coming together i think it kind of helped them to be a somewhat um decent crew going forward so i'm not going to be mad at that in the slightest i'm not going to be mad at that in the slightest 